are approaching the end of a moving walkway. So it's a little past noon on Christmas Day. Uh, I've been here since 9 a.m. It's been very quiet. Uh, few flights in the past couple hours, but between 9 and 10 there was virtually nothing. I haven't seen the police department officers. And I haven't had the scanner on, so I don't know if they're aware of me or caring, but I just, uh, oh, I've been here since, since nine, so about three hours, but uh, a little over three hours actually. But I sat down by the baggage claim and charged devices and edited and posted a video. And TSA came and went, one batch of passengers came and got luggage. Not all of them, just a few bags left over. A couple people straggled in later to pick up a couple of those few leftover bags. And, oh, and a guy asked me if I knew where COVID testing was because he said it was supposed to be, it said in some information he had seen that it was at baggage claim five, which is where I was sitting. Uh, and I told him it was all the way down at the end on the bottom floor, which is where we were. And he came back, he went down that way, came back a little later asking someone else where the COVID testing was. And they, they uh, someone unemployed this time. And they said maybe it wasn't happening because of the holiday. And he said, well, it said it was happening today. So I don't know if they sent him down that way. Oh, I didn't have the scanner on to hear why Tucson Fire and Rescue would be here. I don't want to go out. You know, a lot of times I don't notice the scowls while I'm recording. And sometimes I see them. Oh, there's more medical arriving. Oh, it is Sergeant Meredith. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of back off just for good measure. Oh, and it's also Officer Montoya, I think it was, also from yesterday. So I'm gonna make this first part at least easy in terms of they shouldn't, as far as I can understand, their narrative of the situation, they still shouldn't just immediately kind of pounce on me and ask me to leave today. So I'll make that easy. We'll start with a low bar. And I'm just here. Causing no disturbances. And I'm going to avoid the kind of canned flight information channel. Yeah, because that's fun sometimes that the airport pick that up, but it'll just it'll just keep picking up and I'd rather just leave the stations open for a uh, Uh, specific traffic. Mm. <sighs> and 
and uh, I guess we can catch this medical event more from a distance than anything so didn't seem to be anything real uh, high intensity or critical somebody maybe had a fainting spell or something like that could well be This is more uh, more kind of ticketing activity than I would have expected. Ticketing and boarding on this end. Like people coming home, I was actually a little surprised to see people, well, arriving, I guess. Well, okay, so people arriving for Christmas. And I guess people are still leaving for celebrations with their families. Okay, now it makes sense. I don't know, I was stuck in the mindset of like, people arriving were people coming home. But, uh, but I guess I don't know that. Oh yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Thank you. channels this morning. Oh my gosh. Is there any real traffic? Oh, go through what? Okay, so you were issued a trespass for, for the disturbance yesterday. Did you not understand that warning? So that's a no. Okay. No, no, wait, I'll no, I, I'm actually, no, second. my jaw is actually just a little dropped. Let me, the, dis, the trespass for how long? Are you trying to tell me that I've been sort of permanently trespassed from the no, airport? I told you yesterday, sir, if you're a traveling member of the public and you're buying a ticket, you can use the facility. If you come here and disturb things. Have I disturbed things today? Not today, sir. So where are we at? You tell me how you want to handle this. Well, I want you to do your job and I'll do mine and we'll both Perfect. have a great That's day. That's what we'll do. Thank you, sir. Okay. So I imagine right now he's making a phone call to see how he can arrest me. Well, I didn't realize there's a smoking area right here. And there is, apparently.
So that's all it took was for him to get sight of me. Bye, Coward. Thank you for coming to our beautiful city. I hope you enjoy your visit. And I call him a coward just because he's afraid of transparency. He doesn't want to, he wants to have a conversation in private about how to handle this very public situation. Why not transparency? You need to make a phone call? This guy's watching the heck out of me. You need to make a phone call to figure out how to handle your public duties? Make it in public. Should be a public record anyway. I mean, the kind of thing that you might expect an officer would uh, call about on the radio. And so, you know, I'm tempted to just leave, right? Because I don't want to be arrested based on some garbage. I think that was the spot right down there where they were doing the COVID testing yesterday. Right there in that corner. Yeah. They just had all that uh, pop-up wall stuff. Wasn't it? Right here where it says visitor information. So they had, the, isn't that where it was? That's really what I thought I remembered. But actually, there's a pillar there that would have been, I guess, inside of it, if that's where it was. Was it in a different place and I'm just remembering that wrong? I guess, since there's video, it'll be easy enough to find out. And so, extra funny, that the people who made the business, because they matter, the business paradigm who made the disorderly com or uh, disruption complaint yesterday aren't here today. So the only people, I, I don't know, the only people who voiced a problem, I think other people had problems judging from the looks that I saw on some of the faces that got swept into the video yesterday other people had problems with it, but the only ones who called the police, the paradigm, and they're not here. the sign that says it happens is there some way that I might have been on a different side of things than I thought I mean it's not that big I really don't think I was like in one of those areas that I already went to but on another side no it was it was on the outside I, I remember there was a door right there going out so I think they popped it up and then popped it back down. And they're not there today to give people their 20 to 30 minute antigen test 
that I guess must have something to do with their with passengers ability to fly like they might need to prove that I don't even know what's up with those laws right now I know some some is it a federal thing I don't even know somebody's somebody's talking about requiring some sort of proof of vaccination or whatever and uh but but the thing that I was going to get to about leaving is that it's not a it's not really it's not like a loss if if I come here today and Sergeant Meredith feels like I'm pushing buttons whoops I better push some gimbal buttons there we go uh and decides that he just wants who the heck oh okay and decides that he just wants to do something wacky if he gets the okay to arrest me then he will and I'll be booked and uh, you know if they don't throw charges out I'll get a court date and have to go through all of that I mean it's onerous enough that I mean so in some ways is that a loss because I let the consequences determine my behavior on the one hand maybe so but then on the other hand I can come back here every day like the he can't you know his, yesterday he got to sweep the problem out the door not actually uh, respond to substantive questions of what was happening but just make it stop make the complaint end by getting getting rid of the person which you know he did and I, I didn't see any comments yet saying that it was a fail because I laughed or whatever but I just I don't know I don't see it that way we get to see how our public officials are behaving and what they're doing I don't have to get arrested to prove that they would arrest me for what at this point I mean this is the same guy who said just yesterday that this is a private wait wait negative the hikers are still leading us in um i want to sign it now where i can start to see you for tucson so uh we're definitely gonna need extra personnel for scoping them out well that's border patrol Okay, we have two on combat 434, two on combat 431, and engine 433. Wow. I, oh, engine. That should be a good start. Okay. Well, I thought that was Border Patrol tracking some unpermitted people or something. Some people without their tax stamp. And of course, they're they're dangerous criminals if they don't pay tax immediately upon entry. Whatever. I mean, I'm not like a free immigration, free for all immigration believer, but I like to think more about people than about money. Dig the little airplanes. <laughs> nice touch. And also, I gotta say, that conversation with Sergeant Meredith could have gone very differently. I did not like the sort of presumptive patronizing tone that he took. Well, we have to go through, are we really gonna have this conversation or whatever? We have to go through this again. Uh, I mean, like, we're dealing with legal matters. It's, there's some serious black and white. There's always gray area, but <laughs> it's not unreasonable at all to think that I might have reasonably 
misunderstood what we talked about yesterday. In fact, I don't see how someone wouldn't. I don't see how someone wouldn't misunderstand it and think, okay, you know, they said I created a disturbance. I didn't contest it. I guess, you know, I did have a chance to tell my side of the story and I didn't do so. So, uh... So I left yesterday. As far as I recall, no one said a word about duration. No one said anything about how long I had to stay away from the airport, did they? How would I have any, just as an average member of the public, how, you know, I don't see how a, a, an average member of the public would have any reason to believe they couldn't come back today. So the uh, boots on the ground, police presence is cut in half on Christmas Day at this point in order to try to get some kind of permission or legal backing for, I guess, either excluding me again today or arresting me for coming back. And as far as I can tell, none of what Sergeant Meredith is doing right now is going out on the radio.
and I mean, as far as TSA goes, we can clearly draw the conclusion that they will have seen this video activity happening, right? TSA has clearly seen me recording video. Uh, a number of their members have seen me hanging around this morning for hours before Sergeant Meredith had any idea I was here, apparently because from what I draw from his sort of uh, immature insinuations, I guess, is that, you know, he didn't just, he didn't walk up and inform me that I was uh, in violation of the law or something, you know, he just expected me to have understood, you know, he did the, the little passive aggressive sort of, are we going to have this, are we really going to go through this? As though I should have just understood. Well, if I didn't understand, isn't it kind of his job to say so? In clear language that even a moron could understand because I might be a moron, but I still deserve equal protection under the laws. And, you know, a uh, couple personal notes about Sergeant Meredith. I appreciate, and I hadn't seen anybody else comment about it, but I expect that some people at some point while yesterday's video is up, some people will comment, hey, he was pretty friendly. Uh, he made efforts to, to help. I mean, and other people will probably comment and reply. Those weren't really efforts to help. It was just kind of stalling. He knew there was no admin and this whole idea of like, oh, you think that uh, I'm out uh, overstepping my authority as a police officer here, contact our legal department. Uh, you think this is a public place and I'm just spouting off that it's private. And it is the, uh, the Tucson Aviation or the Tucson, is it aviation? No, the Tucson, Tucson Airport Authority was established in 1948. It is a civil nonprofit. He distinctly said it was a private nonprofit. It is a nonprofit organization, but it is a civil nonprofit organization under Arizona law. And this is owned by the city of Tucson, leased by the airport authority for whose dedicated police department Sergeant Marks works, or Sergeant Meredith. That's what I thought I heard the first time. That's why that little blip was in yesterday's video about him saying something other than uh, the name that was on his vest. Because I heard, I thought I heard Marks, but that's his first name. Mark Meredith. Um, yeah, so the, they're, an, they're an, a, a public police department. They are a public agency. He is a public official. He's a police officer with an Arizona law enforcement agency under the auspices of the Tucson Airport Authority, which is technically a civil nonprofit. They lease this property until 2078 from the city of Tucson. The city owns the property. The airport authority manages it, runs it, leases it. So to, to all intents and purposes, the city of Tucson does not have control of the property. It's just as if the, the city owned property. I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna make some not quite Walmart analogy, but uh, it's probably kind of more not that way. Mm -hmm. 
because I don't believe the city is in the business of leasing its property out to private businesses. It's, that's just not how it works. The city might lease property to the University of Arizona or Banner Medical, which is a private business, but they have an agreement with the University of Arizona and it's getting so it's like hard to tell. You know, you have to have some experience in in that kind of law to even interpret what the ownership means or the who has control of the property. And in this case, I mean, it's clearly, it has nothing to do with it being owned by the city per se in terms of who has access. It's that it is run by a quasi-governmental agency. and 100% open to, to the public. It is a public access area. It's, there's no, uh, there is that distinction between something like this, your city hall, your public library, and something like Walmart. Very clearly a distinction. And so, you know, when he said it was a nonprofit yesterday, sort of true but he did say private and it is not it is a civil nonprofit and uh as far as i can tell i actually scrolled through the CAFR, the uh comprehensive annual financial report uh the latest one i could find was 2019 and uh, and i don't see anything in there about them directly taking funds from the taxpayer so it's not like you can say it's public, it's taxpayer funded. It's not. As far as I can tell, everything runs on revenues, operational revenues and non-operational revenues, including investments. So they're, they're making money on interest, dividends, that kind of thing. And on, of course, operational revenues from selling overpriced tickets to too many people for each plane. There was a moment when I was following Sergeant Meredith back to his safe place when I thought of, who was it? Who was? Who was not going to cross the line with that Sheriff Fagan? Who was that? The Sheriff Fagan. Oh my gosh, that double talker thought he was slick with them words and them lines. But Sergeant Meredith didn't go that route and say anything like, you can't come back here, don't cross that line, you better not follow me, or anything like that. Uh, and I just wonder if, uh, if he would have just turned and cuffed me. And that's always a consideration for, for auditors with my wealth of experience, my pennies of experience. Let me pitch into the well here that, and you know, anybody who watches auditors will learn that pretty quick too, that you can be 100% within your right to be doing the recording you're doing in the place you're at, in the time and manner that you're doing it, and still end up in court on a charge of some little thing that you just didn't realize that people violate all day long. 
that gets selectively enforced on you. And then the concomitant risk of having them declare that your devices are evidence in their case and they're gonna keep them while they investigate for like a year. Even after the, uh, I forget the word, there's a, somebody got their name attached to that concept that uh, at some point when someone is holding something like digital evidence and they don't get a warrant, they no longer will have the, they no longer will be able to present that evidence in a court case because they don't, you know, the, the something has expired, not quite a statute of limitations, but something like that. And still not get that stuff back. Oh, I like how they they use a bicycle as a conceptualization of six feet of space on that sign. They're like, please keep a bicycle length between yourself and other passengers. Because we're talking transportation here. It's also roughly four and a half of the first stone wheel for those who think in older terms. while I'm uh, struggling a little with the gimbal there. Because I inverted the axes, um, because it, it the, the default setup was not intuitive to me and I kept doing it the wrong way. And then I inverted them so that it goes the way that kind of makes more sense to me. And I still mess it up because I started to learn it the default way. Um, and that, Reminds me of a comment on the first day that came up during the first day of yesterday's video being up. Where someone said, nice use of gimbals. Uh, and then I'll, I'll paraphrase, like, makes it clear that you, or makes it hard to claim that it wasn't intentional or something like that. And I, I didn't reply to that comment. I had some thoughts, but I, I then I was, I just wasn't quite sure if that was supposed to mean that I would potentially find myself in legal trouble because it's clear that I'm intentionally recording or the or vice versa I don't even know hey I've never been back here there's a whole little dead area with art. Wow. Oh. And airplanes. Don't film the airplanes! Those are federal airplanes! Don't film them. There are no airplanes. It's all an illusion. These people are never gonna be heard from again. They just get into these little runways, shuffles them off into container trucks, and they get shipped to the rendering plant. 
no airplanes. Oh wait, there's one. All right, never mind that theory. There it goes. Nope, that's a bird. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? I don't know where the plane went. Oh, there it is. Merry Christmas. Thank you. We will see you. Not if I see you first. Oop. Wow, that is a touchy joystick. All right, that airplane is a blur, a blob, a distant memory. Now, it's funny, like I said, don't film the airplanes coming in here, but I, but I actually, like, I wonder if I could encounter someone who would come up and tell me that, that you can be in this public fishbowl looking out onto all the runways and all the airplanes and all the access chutes and that you just have to refrain from documenting that in any uh, visual manner. Perhaps pastels or watercolors would be okay. You know, <laughs> it, it, would, it would be ridiculous, and yet I have to wonder, like, could, could that happen? Because I'm, like, capturing tarmac secrets. Uh, BE-9 or Tango, and I just want a VFR flight following to Mike Tango, Juliet, is that correct? I'm just uh, standing by one moment. Copy two nine three eight. Two nine three eight. All right. It should be with paramedics between. I can have you met up with the civilian yet. They're supposed to be leading to the location. Ooh, they have a snitch. We had a civilian on the side of the mountain saying just along the trail. We're in Pima County. I'm almost on train. Copies. Are you just ahead of engine 423? Well, they're with me. They're just there. They have the basket. So I went ahead. Well, this could be search and rescue, not border patrol. Copies. Thank you. I guess I could look at the screen, except I kind of can't. Mail up of Johnson, Common, Perth of Troy, Tom, Robert O'Shea, Bill A. Allen, 050296. Because I was about to say, can you imagine spending your Christmas day leading border patrol to illegal immigrants in the desert? Oh my gosh, that is adorable. Travelers. Well, 
Well, given how long it's taking Sergeant Meredith to make a reappearance, it's a good thing I'm not any kind of threat or in any kind of trouble. He just disappeared. Maybe he found a Christmas present back there and got distracted. Let's go out inside and see. Oh, let's do a file size cut. realized a bit ago that I never saw the uh, emergency, the EMS trucks, the, the fire truck or the uh, rural, rural medical, whatever it said, rural, I don't know. Never saw that leave, but apparently it did. It must have. Uh, that transmission was cutting out, but I did hear him say people are injured. That doesn't mean that it's not Border Patrol and that they're not heading to uh, some place where someone is reporting potential illegal immigration activities. Things are definitely picking up. Uh, and this has been real time, so it's about whatever time it is later than noon, uh, whatever the length of this video is. Think 12.05 and add the time at the bottom of the video, and that's what time it is. I guess the time's at the bottom. I don't know. People might have other interfaces with customization where you just got to have your time bar going up and down on the left side. I know people are like that. They're like, I'm going to write an API for the YouTube app that makes it <laughs> just put the time bar on the left side because that's how I want it. So... The time since we have seen Sergeant Meredith answers his question, how do you want this to go? This is how I want this to go. I walk through the airport going, mmm, yummy airport footage, mmm, people traveling, mmm, free movement and uh, not having to necessarily like watch my back. like not thinking that someone is gonna suddenly grab my hands and put cuffs on them <laughs> or just verbally stop me for whatever reason i mean whatever people are gonna do that they can ask me for money or ask me if i'm traveling and if i'd like to take their luggage for them to which i would echo the wor words of the famous carlos and say no man Not 
so yes, exactly this. If I feel like catching some uh, foot traffic around the baggage claim, some people checking in to security, some people just coming and going on escalators and moving walkways, yada da, all the, I mean, for real, anyone who's done videography knows that you can sometimes, I mean, especially on a professional level, which I haven't, so I'm just kind of talking out of some random orifice, but, uh, but I'm sure it's true that you can go through a hundred hours of footage to get that 30 seconds that you want. The, the 30 seconds that's perfect, that typifies the subject, that like nails the mood you were looking for, that, oh, I don't know, feeds your favorite narrative, you know? <laughs> you know? I think I just learned that when you touch any of the controls, when you move the gimbal manually while it's panning through a turn, it actually interrupts it from doing its own pan. You cannot enter. This is a Gates exit. So if you're not part of Bill Gates' family, you cannot come out from there. So this might be interesting to watch, but I don't think I wanna step up my game by pissing off the Gates family. I still have a life to live. And so, yeah, how do I want this to go? Just like this, I walk around the airport gathering some footage and then I'm done and I leave and everybody goes on. Here it is, it's right here. How did I miss this? This is indeed baggage claim five. So, all right, I am completely wonked out. Or wait, have they set this up No, this is where it was. And I walked over that way to those stairs. So it wasn't at the end. It was right here. I was lying to that guy this morning when I said it was further down. The employee was correct when he said that it wasn't happening today. Presumably because of the holiday. And so now, much like at the little fishbowl up there, I could almost imagine someone... Have not seen this? I could almost imagine someone coming up and telling me patience is a virtue. Dang, I could have pointed to that. Definitely got some eyes from a, an employee. Oh. Wow, so you need certain account, certain appointment to travel to Hawaii. Things are getting weird, folks. Holiday hours, closed today. There's that answer. Only open on the, in the morning tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but New Year's Eve day. And then uh, closed again on the glorious day itself. Thank you for remembering to be kind, have patience, and be supportive just the way the staff is. Like, so if you look back at the video yesterday, oh, here we go. Security notice, no photos or videos allowed. What we got here is not an ARS, but smartsign.com. So, a notice that they pulled off the internet and put up in a binder laminate, like a binder sleeve. And same, same. Is this like a special desk for those going to uh, outer Mongolia? No, it's just some other little thing. Maybe they were doing two separate stations. I didn't catch that yesterday. 
But again, like I could almost imagine someone going up, look, there's a sign right there. You can't film this even when there's nothing happening, right? And so just like here, okay, same holiday stuff. Now, uh, I didn't get into this with the paradigm people yesterday. Uh, just clipboards, biohazard disposal down under there. Um, well secured, right? Uh, I didn't get into the the whole. I mean, we we that wasn't really a conversation. It was a cruddy shouting match and uh, a disturbance. I I I mean, and uh. You know, they, they clearly cannot just stop people from recording videos in what area? Like, they haven't defined an area. They're just like, if you can see this sign, I guess, but people's eyesight is different, that's not tenable at all. You can't just have a sign on a back wall or on a desk saying your photographs. The thing that, that I grant them a little bit of legitimacy, a little bit of legitimacy for is prohibiting the, the photos back inside the area where they're actually doing the procedure. And as far as other people recording in there, of course, though they didn't do what I would consider due diligence to actually finish making that area private because they left uh, the entrance wide open to view from the public area. All they needed was one more segment of privacy wall to stand in front, out in front of that entrance so people would go into a little pseudo foyer kind of area. And, uh, and so, so even that, like even if someone can see the procedure from, from the public area, uh, they really, Paradigm really can't say, don't film that. They need to block it off. And so I get the, 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 the thing that I grant is the legitimacy, the legitimacy, the legitimacy of uh, prohibiting photos in the area where the procedure is happening for other people, prohibiting other people from photographing that. If I go in there to have that procedure and I want to record it, then in, as far as I understand things, that prohibition may become a little more tenuous. If I want to record my own, like, because what? Otherwise, what? There's a uh, private health information belonging to other people that's visible back in there to me as a, as a patient? Uh, I would think not. And so, really, they don't, I, I think the sign as they have it is really, or at least with plausible deniability when someone comes at the actual company with a legal action about their uh, expression of their belief that they can curtail people's rights in the public area surrounding their little pop-up facility, uh, that they would be able to say, oh no, it just applies to the, the, the private area back in there. Well, that's not how the workers are acting on the ground. Um, somewhat-ish, I guess. Yeah, right on. Thanks. Uh, do you do you go to space? Do you go to space? Eventually. All right. But thanks for recording. I appreciate it. I'll only wait until you can. Just uh, when you get up there, will you wave? Appreciate When you get up there, will you wave? Right on. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good Christmas or whatever. Well. So yeah, I mean, this also doesn't have, 
any sort of uh, statute or ordinance or anything on it. So it's not like things are only enforceable if they have that. It's just like it definitely clarifies. It gives you a resource. I mean, you're supposed to be able to understand the law as a normal average person going about the world. You're supposed to be able to figure out what you should and shouldn't do. If you do your own research, uh, you should be able to figure out how to not break the law in plain language, pretty much. And so putting the statute on the sign gives you a resource to look that stuff up. I think, what do you, do you think Sergeant Meredith's shift just ended? Maybe this is our new normal. I'll show up at the airport, the Tucson Airport Authority police will rattle some sabers at me. Give me some passive aggressive mumbo jumbo and then disappear. They're back there snickering. They're watching me on the security cameras like he's still looking for Sergeant Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm done. All right, so we got this much footage of this airport today. And we saw what we saw. And we didn't see what we didn't see. Unless you did. And you should probably keep that to yourself. Nothing I say should be considered legal advice. Nothing I ever say will ever establish a, an attorney-client privilege between us because I'm not an attorney. And I accept no responsibility for damages or other losses incurred as a result of listening to any of my words ever. And... We'll just uh, take a gander down the sergeant's hallway. And uh, be done. Can you know?